Let's discuss the pressure vacuum breaker. What I have here in my hand is a Zern Wilkins 710, which is a three quarter inch unit. Um, and what we see here is we have a number one shutoff valve, a number two shutoff valve, a number one test cock, and a number two test cock. The direction of flow is up and through. These always have to be mounted in the vertical position, and they have to be mounted 12 inches higher than the highest outlet on the system. The highest sprinkler head or hose bib or anything, these have to be 12 inches higher than that. And generally the way you're going to install these, of course, uh, you're generally going to see them up out of the ground or inside where you have a stalk, a nipple that comes up and then it's going to come out and go back down. A lot of times they'll put a T here with a drain valve or a, a connection for winterization here at the end and the main direction of flow goes back down to the ground and to the valves. On these are, are kind of strange that they have an upper limit of 150 PSI or 10.3 bar. That's your upper limit, but they need 20 PSI or 1.38 bar just to be able to operate. Okay, it takes the 20 PSI to, to open the spring to make this happen because if you remember how we talked about the atmospheric vacuum breaker, it's just a, a, a piece in here that goes up and down with the water and it closes up when water direct, uh, changes direction. Well, on this one, it's spring loaded. We have a poppet and a vent piece in here, a float that has two springs in it. So it operates a little bit differently. Like I said, we need 20 PSI just to make sure that it operates. But on the other side, on our uh, exhaust side, on our valve side, we need to keep be able to keep five PSI in the line to, to keep the spring pushed down and keep this closed under normal closed conditions which is not a problem if you have valves downstream for this. I was trying to think of a, a situation to where you would have one of these and not have a closed end down here to where it would you know, run out of pressure, the pressure would dribble out of it and it wouldn't be able to stay closed. But in, in an irrigation system, always you're going to have valves that come after this. So it's going to be able to keep that pressure closed in there and keep this functional. This form here, you're going to be able to find devices from one half inch all the way up to two inch. And then when you get to two and a half inch all the way up to 10 inch, what they're actually going to look like is something like this, like a, a, um, a long DCVA, except it'll have one of these vents up on top of it. It probably won't have the test cocks coming out on top like this. They'll probably be on the side, but I've never seen one in the field. Only pictures of them. We don't use them that much here, only in very special situations. Let's see what I need to tell you about that. These can be installed indoors or outdoors. The only thing that you need to remember is that these are going to gurgle some water out of them. So if you're going to mount this indoors, there needs to be a vent underneath it or a drain. I mean, a drain to take care of the water. And if you mount these outdoors, make sure that they never freeze. Before winter, you really need to either disconnect the entire thing, have unions, or take the guts out of it. We're going to take this apart in just a second and take a look at the energy. You really need to know about these. But if you're going to, say, wrap it with insulation, don't wrap this top part because if you uh, close off this vent, you're going to cause it to not operate properly. And plus, you're going to catch the water that's gurgling up out of this thing. They have ones called um, the, the spill resistant. This is your fill in here in the, um, the paperwork, but it, it's a spill resistant pressure vacuum breaker and they call it the SVB and it's basically made for indoor installation so you're not getting that water that's gurgling up out of that. So those are pretty good. So let's take this thing apart. I've got a couple of things I want to tell you about here before we break this down. If we're about to put this into service for the first time, if it's dry, what we want to do is have both of our shutoff valves off, closed, 
and we have water on at the meter so we've got water up to the device so what I want you to do is take your number one shutoff valve and just barely open it. You'll hear water start to move up into the device and you'll hear water start to gurgle out the vent here. When you hear that, go ahead and open it all the way up in one motion. It should seat the, the check valve in here and quit gurgling and just go on and fill up and then you won't make any more noise. And if it doesn't do that and continues to leak out of here, shut it back off, drain it, and then try again. But we'll make sure we drain it out of our number two test cock here. But let's go ahead and shut this off. Okay. So we're going to break this down. So what we've done is shut both of our shut off valves off and we've captured some pressure in here so before we take our pieces apart here it's best to go ahead and take your cover off and open your number two test cock open a little bit and drain out the pressure that's in here you can go ahead and leave that open just remember to close it before you put it back into service but let's go ahead and take this thing apart And what I do is I set all my components in order. There's a couple of ways that you can keep track of this. The first way is that, you know, when you get one of these devices or you get a replacement kit or something for it, it's going to have instructions and it'll have an exploded view of the piece, which is extremely helpful in putting them back together. Or you can take your phone and film yourself. It doesn't matter if you're working on a, a valve or a carburetor, I suggest you film everything that you take apart so that you can go back later and watch your video and see, make sure that you're putting everything back in in the right place. So we've got our cap off here with two screws. And now the first thing that we see in here is the bonnet. This piece is plastic. And I'm going to show you here that, you know, don't take a small pair of pliers and think that you're going to crack this open and unscrew it. A lot of times when these have been when these have been in place for a while, this is seized up pretty badly. So I would suggest to get a pair of channel locks which have longer teeth on it to get on here just so that you don't break this plastic piece. So we're going to take this bonnet off. We have our float spring. We have a float. And now the next piece down in here is a spring retainer. And this is where people, you know, get a little flustered by it. But I promise you, after you've done it once or twice, this isn't going to bother you at all. And I probably should have grabbed a one-inch version of this. I just grabbed a three-quarter inch off the shelf to show you here. But um, and my fingers aren't particularly fat, but sometimes you got to get maybe two fingers down in here to do this right. But there's just two lips on the inside of this chamber here, two lips with grooves in them. So all we need to do, and this is on a spring, so we're going to push down and turn it 90 degrees and let it pop out. And so when we put it back together, it's going to essentially be the opposite of that. And it's got these little tabs that go up when we put it back in there. Okay, so that's the spring retainer. Here is our check spring, and then the last piece that we've got down in here is the poppet. I'm going to pull this out like that. That's our poppet. And if you notice, it's got some fins on here and a gasket. When we put this back together, we're going to make sure that all that fits down in there, but we're going to inspect it first. So if we've taken this apart, it probably means there's a problem. It's failed its test. And when you go to test this, if you get certified to do testing, if the PVB fails its test, there's about three or four reasons it could fail, and about three of them have to do with these components in here. So if you deal with these in your market, you're going to become very familiar with taking these things apart and putting them back together because a lot of times it's just the springs or the seals get a little bit of scale or calcium buildup on them and just need to be rinsed off or replaced. So when you uh, before you go to put this stuff back together, you can feel down in here and there's a plastic or a nylon seat that's right there that the poppet sits down on. So just take your finger and feel down in there. I think you can get replacements for those. I, they used to come in the replacement kit. I'm not sure if they do anymore, but um, it's been a while since I've rebuilt one in the field. But 
let's put it back together and I'm going to grab my poppet here and I like to just drop it straight down in there because it's a little difficult to get in otherwise. Okay. And now our check spring. Okay, so we're going to let you look in here. What I'm going to do is we're going to set this spring retainer right down there on top of the spring right and I've got it offset by 90 degrees I'm going to push it down I'm going to push it down in there uh, down below the little C ledge and turn it 90 degrees and let it come up on the spring so a lot of times you won't get it on the first try it takes sometimes two or three tries but especially with big fingers like this but let's go ahead and do it and spin this around There we go. Okay, what was that? Three times, four times <laughs> messing with it. Now, it's not seated down um, in its little grooves there, so we're just going to move it over just a little bit and mess with it until it you can feel it seat down in its grooves. There we go. You can tell when it seats down in there because you'll be able to feel it feel it move up and down on the spring there and it will fit right into place. So just takes a second to do. So now we have our float goes in next. Our float spring. And now let's notice on the float here that on the top there's a little hole and our bonnet has a little rod on it. A little piece that's going to fit down in there so that's the next little thing that we have to deal with but it's not a big deal we just have to make sure that when we set this down in there it fits right on top and everything's straight up and down if not when you push when you start to thread this back down in there it'll push the float over and the whole mechanism won't work so when we get this screwed in, you should be able to take your finger and feel it pushing the float down. It should be more or less a, a smooth operation down in there. Of course, you're not going to be able to push it too far down in there. And so now we're going to put our cap back on and we'll be done.